So going back to uh, actually what you said, I thought was interesting. Uh, you said a B-21, that it was not just going to be a bomber, but multi-role. Do you remember the, or actually it was, it was before my time, so I remember reading about it, though, the A-12 Avenger 2? Yeah, of course. Yeah, the okay. A-12 was, uh, you know, that that was an interesting program. I mean... So is it going to be more along those lines, like how that thing was supposed to be multi? It was supposed to even carry air to air missiles. Yeah, um, I, you know, I've I've discussed this a little bit, um, actually quite quite a bit um, in some of my posts. But you have a what you have is a very low observable aircraft, so stealthy, right? It has ability to to carry a large payload. It's going to be less than the B two, probably around forty to fifty thousand pounds instead of eighty thousand pounds. It's going to be a little bit smaller than the B-2. It's going to have, you know, really good endurance range and really good lo loitering time. Probably going to fly higher than the B-2 based on its design. It's actually the design you see, the B-21, at least that uh, we know about it, the, the image that we do have is almost identical to what the B-2 was, was going to be before it was remodeled at high cost in the 1980s to be able to penetrate at low altitude. That's what gave the B-2 its saw sawtooth edge. It actually reduced its stealthiness, too, by doing that. But um, at the time, they wanted something that could penetrate low down. So if they make this big investment in bombers and stealth becomes a kind of a, you know, a non-issue down the road and not not capable of protecting the aircraft, um, they wanted to be able to go back to low altitude penetration. So the aircraft that you see today where it has a simpler trailing edge, um, is very similar to what the B-2 was going to be. So we're talking, and it also it lowered the ceiling of the B-2 when they'd made that change to about 50,000 feet. So the B-21, I believe that thing's going to be able to fly quite a bit higher than, than the, uh, the B-2. What that does is it gives it a larger horizon. Um, if you going up to almost U-2 heights, you get a much larger look over the horizon for your sensors and your communications capabilities. That means it can control and um, help and, assist and be a force multiplier for other assets over a larger battle space using, you know, line of sight connectivity. It's very hard to jam. And it can also be kind of a central node where it can potentially have the satellite gear, the low probability of intercept satellite gear to take all that information, such as um, uh, data links from F-35s, it's MATL data link system, which is directional, very hard to jam and very hard to detect. It can suck all that up and it will have MATL data link. We know that. And it can shoot that up to the bird and send it all around the world to, to be uh, used by other platforms and commanders, et cetera. So just in a networking role, um, from what we kind of know about it, yes, it's going to be an amazing capability. As far as what it's going to be able to carry, we are developing very long-range air-to-air missiles, multiple systems right now that we know of. Um, those are not built to stick inside an F-22 or an F-35. They're built to, they're outsized, they're larger. Um, but you know, you're, if you can have a missile that can, that can use not just the range of a new ASA radar, which is m substantially more than a mechanically scanned array radar, but also suck, use the network and it's network enabled where you don't need to use a radar at all. You can use the radar off an Aegis cruiser that's looking at a target that's 400 miles in front of the bomber or, or even from behind. If you can use that for targeting and you're just a, a basically a, a magazine for that missile, you can help fighters like F-22, like F-35, that will run out of missiles far forward of where that aircraft is operating. So you're talking totally new ideas of air-to-air -air warfare. If you can put long-range weapons on F-15, B-21, etc., cetera. Um, and beyond just the air-to-air the -air stuff, you also have the potential of um, you know, uh, being able to integrate small diameter bomb too which is going to be, it's networked. It has a multi tri mode seeker, you know, any weather it can strike a target and it has a lot of range. You got like a 50 mile range with that glide bomb. You can pack a lot of those in a B-21, right? So one aircraft can not just take out, um, it can literally take out a full formation of moving tanks and air and vehicles 50 miles away, a stealth aircraft with one pass. So we're getting into a whole new realm of, of uh, tactics and how we could pros potentially prosecute a war against someone like China, where you're not going to have, uh, you know, thousands of target sets. You're going to have tens of thousands of target sets. It's going to be just a huge amount of targets to hit. And you need aircraft like that that have super high volume. Beyond that, you have sensors, right? You have very powerful radar, um, electro-optical sensors. It's probably going to have something very similar to the F-35's um, electro-optical suite 
I won't be surprised if they actually lift it directly and, um, and other capabilities that, you know, are still new. So with that, it's going to be able to feed all that information it collects back into the larger network. And uh, that's going to enable a lot of other aircraft that have let inferior sensors to do a lot of damage. So B-21, and also it's going to be an unmanned <laughs> on top of it and a nuclear bomber. So America's not getting a new bomber. They're getting a whole new idea of a high-flying, long-endurance, very stealthy platform with what seems like a very decent price for, for at least from what we're told of how the program is progressing and how the original uh, cost estimates work out. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to stick to that price. You know how it always ends up working out. Um, do you think stealth is going to be enough, though? Uh, you look at the B, or for example, you know you have things like the S four hundred. You have uh, some pretty complicated and pretty complex. They always joke or really vaguely call them uh, stealth busting radars, right? Like they have better computer processors, which can clean up a lot of the noise really work through this stuff and be able to see very uh, low radar cross-section uh, aircraft at further and further ranges. Do you think that's going to be enough, though? Or is there other technologies it's going to uh, implement to help it do its job and help it get over the target? Or is it going to be more and more, and we're already seeing it today, rely on more standoff range weapons like JASM? Okay, so let, let's start with stealth. Um, and that's a great question, man. Probably the most important question uh, when it comes to air warfare that we have today. Stealth already isn't enough. <laughs> that We're past that. Um, and yeah, the new integrated air defense systems are only getting better. And also, um, people talk a lot about, you know, low frequency, really long range radar that can pick up even, you know, stealth bombers and fighters, right? Those radars, let's start with those long range radars. They're fixed. They're large arrays, large installations. And... They can potentially give you a general location of where a you know a target is that is unidentified, that is a low radar cross section um, on most radars. It doesn't give you a fire control like telemetry that you can actually prosecute the target. It's not that accurate, and it's not going to be that accurate in the in the near future. But it can cue other radars in that area of that target and in electro optical systems and et cetera, to look in that area of space that it thinks it's detected and, and fuse that information to see if they can get a, a targeting track that is, you know, weapons engagement quality. Okay. So that is a problem. How do you deal with it? <laughs> Pretty simple. You knock it out, you knock it out, you just kill it. The first thing that's going to go are long range, you know, installations that, you know, are fixed. You just, you destroy it. And I mean, look what we're making to do that. Hypersonic weapons. You don't think that's on the top of the list for a hypersonic weapon? That'd be the first thing that's being used. Can't defend against it, really. That will whack that thing out and boom, lights are out. And now you don't have that long range early warning system. That's very vulnerable to attack. You're going to be more, um, the enemy will have gr semi ground mobile systems, like what we're talking about, which are not as capable as detecting um, low radar cross session cross-section aircraft. So there's a way to deal with it. Um, beyond that, stealth is not, it's, it's, it's part of a cocktail of survivability. Okay. Whether it's F-35, B-21, we can talk about anything. It has to do with standoff munitions, like we just discussed, including, um, uh, jammers that can fly, um, like mauled J, which can go 600 miles and has a very, you know, very sinister jamming package on it that can make the radars look like they're seeing some crazy stuff that they aren't. And they can also just jam those radars. And then you have electronic warfare and electronic warfare is absolutely key. It's as key as stealth. Okay. Even for the F-35, the F-35 is towed decoys. Okay. That are active They're there. And we kind of broke that story to a certain extent that, I mean, we, they built this airplane that's very stealthy, supposedly for fire control raiders, especially, especially from the frontal hemisphere from the back, maybe not as much, but yet they put on toad high end toad fiber optic decoys. That's because you're going to need a, the aircraft flies in different configurations. Sometimes, you know, a pop-up, a uh, bad guy on the ground can come out of nowhere and maybe it's not in a full stealth configuration. That's one thing, but at the same time, you're going to, get caught off guard. You're going to be, sometimes there isn't a route to the target that's sanitized where you can get through without being detected. Those decoys give you survivability. The F-35 has a very advanced electronic warfare system beyond that tow decoy system. 
that is the other part of its capability for stealth. In fact, it's probably more important than the actual shaping the aircraft in a lot of ways to jam, confuse, and blind and avoid enemy radars. And so the F-35 pilot will know based on its surveillance systems, which is part of that system, which sucks up all that electronic intelligence in real time, which was like when the F-117 was around, that happened during mission planning. They had no idea. They didn't have a radar warning receiver on that aircraft. They were being painted. They had no idea they were being painted by radar. The F-35 pilot has a map that shows them all the different potential threats, and they then can in real time choose the best route through those threats, what electronic countermeasures to use and employ, the aircraft helps with that, or to destroy or evade those threats. They can launch an S small diameter bomb at it and destroy it if they can't evade it, right? So we're in a whole different world of stealth survivability, and it, it, it needs a cocktail a packet of capabilities to make an aircraft survivable. And that also includes standoff electronic warfare. And that like the, the Growlers E-18Gs, you know, that's a huge part of stealth being survivable. Those aircraft will allow to provide some, some uh, jamming support that will reduce, will shrink the effective range of those bad, you know, enemy, potential enemy radars that will allow those F-35s to sneak through where they, maybe they couldn't before. Because stealth isn't invisibility. It's, it's in just ge- very general speaking, it, it's how far a radar, you know, can detect you distance wise, um, different radars on different operating at different bandwidths, et cetera, frequencies and how far they can actually, um, detect you. So if you're in super Hornet, that is not stealthy. Maybe they can see it 70 miles and F 35, maybe they see it 10. That gives you a lot of playroom to get around, to survive and make it through the target. So it's mission planning. It's real time being able to use sensors to make real-time strategic decisions to get into an area and out sur- and, and survive, what targets not to engage, what targets to engage, electronic warfare, active electronic warfare, both on the platform and external, um, data link giving you even more information to make good decisions, and then you have stealth. Okay, so there's, I think people need to realize there is no like, oh man, that's that plane stealthier than that plane. And that plane has this, that, that there is a package and you have to look at the variables you have to see what you can accomplish. 